the latest on what's going on with OBA. Yep. So it's, it's a fast moving space. I think what's really important to do is to separate the noise from what's truly happened. There have been two bills that have been introduced in Congress, one of which is very much around the existing self-regulatory program and endorses everything that we've been doing. The other is about do not track, but do not track is not do not call. It's not well defined and it's very important that everybody in the ecosystem understand that the FTC is not saying that the ICON program has failed. They're saying the ICON program is essential. The chairman of the Federal Trade Commission last week did an interview where he said the industry controls its own fate in making the ICON program a success. So the time to move is now. The challenges on Do Not Track are that tracking has not been defined. And so there's a lot of commotion and Microsoft has put something out, Google's put something out, Mozilla's putting something out. These are betas. Um, we at, at Evidon do not endorse any Do Not Track functionality that's, that resides in the browser from the browser maker. We think that the right thing is to leave it in the control of the consumer and with products that are independent, including one we operate called Ghostery. So stay tuned to the space, but the sum of it is stopping now on the self-reg program is the very worst thing we can do in terms of creating a bad outcome for all of us in Washington. What's happening in Washington? What's the difference between the Federal Trade Commission and what's happening in Congress? So the Federal Trade Commission right now has fairly broad overview for behavioral advertising to the extent that it could be considered a deceptive trade practice if companies are not being transparent. However, they don't have full enforcement ability and they need an act of Congress to take on greater enforcement capabilities. That's one of the reasons that these bills have been introduced. And when a bill is passed into law, then it's handed back to the Federal Trade Commission to do what's called rulemaking, to actually determine the rules by which they will regulate. So it seems like it's separate, but really they're acting together? It's the same government. What happens is when a bill is passed, it's then handed back to the Federal Trade Commission to actually implement. Congress passes laws, but the implementation is done by the FTC. What are companies doing? From Evanon, what we're seeing is a tremendous, tremendous acceptance of the program. It's still early days, but we're now serving billions and billions of impressions every month, and we're on hundreds of websites where we're serving the icon and the footer and we're putting the icon in the ad and giving consumers real transparency. We've actually sent hundreds of thousands of opt-out requests. The good news in that is that the opt-out rate is very low. So being transparent, giving consumers better control over their privacy does not result in tremendous amounts of opt-outs. So business results will proceed really unchanged, but with consumers having the trust and confidence about how their data is being collected and used to target them online. There are different types of consumers. Most consumers, this is not a huge issue. There is a segment of very vocal, privacy conscious consumers who don't really today have the control that they want and I think as an industry we can do better. We talked about this a year ago, that there's an opportunity continually for us as an industry to do better. Because right now, if a consumer is seeing an ad that was using behavioral data, they still don't broadly have the ability to find out why the ad got there and don't have the ability to opt out. However, a lot of this is also consumer education because most consumers don't understand what data is actually being used. Many of them, and uh, Pubmatic is coming out with a report that I think came out today, where it shows that what consumers think is being collected and used to target them is very different than what's actually being used. And so it's important for the industry to be transparent, explain that these data that are being used are anonymous. It's not PII, it's not email addresses, it's not phone numbers. It's just data of how you behave on one website and move to another. By being transparent, consumers tend to become much more relaxed. What about enforcement and how do you separate the good actors from the bad actors? So everybody who is an IAB member, and this is part of the new code of conduct that was approved yesterday, needs to be compliant with these self-regulatory principles. They need to go to a site called aboutads.info, sign the license agreement, and make things transparent and clear to consumers. There will be bad actors. That's a fact of life. But that is okay as long as the good actors do the right thing. And the Better Business Bureau, in particular, along with the Direct Marketing Association, will be enforcing to watch what's happening. And for the bad actors, they'll be calling them out, holding them accountable, making it public in the press what's happening. And ultimately, if companies don't comply, they can find themselves being referred to the Federal Trade Commission. And once that happens, it's not a real pleasant experience for the bad actor. So why is the media making such a big deal out of this? Well, for starters, the internet is taking off. It's become a big business. Online advertising is growing at such exponential rates and data is the fastest growing part of that space that it's become a big deal. And the other part is while 
Uh, there are things that go on in other types of media. Uh, unfortunately, we can't have that debate. That, that's been around for 40, 50 years in terms of using direct mail and other sources, but it's because those practices are transparent and there's always, always a form with those uh, types of offline data where a consumer, you can trace back to where a consumer opted in. In the online world, the way the internet is built is it inherently is opt out. So the assumption is you can collect data until someone opts out and the reason that there's commotion is because it's not easy and clear for how consumers can opt out right now and we need to do better as an industry. Does the press make use terms that sometimes we personally don't think are such good ones like surveillance and tracking and spying? Absolutely. But we can complain about it or we can do the right thing and if we do the right thing then we turn the story to our advantage. If we complain about it and just sit back and moan then we're never going to be on top of this and the time to get on top of it is right now.